we live? Hey, everybody. Welcome to Just Frank and Killian. I'm Just Frank, and that's Just Killian. I'm coming to you live from uh, Kona, Hawaii. Hawaii. I've been here long enough that I pronounce it correctly at this point. Hawaii. Say it again. Hawaii. Oh. Hawaii. Hawaii. There's actually an like a, a thing and then another I. I don't, you know, it's a thing. Um, I think the last podcast, I, I we fucked we fucked up something. Uh, I want to say goodbye and mahalo and all of fucking galalo and kulula alao. Oh yeah, you'd fit right in around here. Mahalo. Just right in. Oh, they'd love you. The locals would love you. No, they hate whiteies. They hate I, white boys. Yes, they do. <laughs> yes, they do. <laughs> what do they call them? Fucking uh, howly. Howley's. Howley's. Uh, Howley's. That's right. Howley. Wait, let me get yeah. this on camera. So it's mm. Howley. Yeah. Hey, Howley's. Howley. Yeah. Okay. Howley. You won't be coming to Hawaii with me anytime in the future. I'm glad I invited you. Um, I have been to Hawaii, but I went to uh, Oahu. Oahu. More insanely, I've invited you to Vegas with me on the yeah. next leg of my <laughs> Vegas, world tour. Baby. We're going to Vegas. The human, the human romper room. Um, mm. it's literally, I've said this, uh, Las mm. Vegas is a bounce house for crazy. It, oh. it is designed as long as you have ID near, as I can tell you legally can't get into any trouble in any form or any condition period. I'm, mm. I'm sure you're going to figure it out. I mean, you will probably remarkably figure out a way to get in trouble, but, um, I got married in Vegas. I was just in Vegas, maybe what? Uh, eight month ago. weeks ago? Month ago, October? yeah. Month and a half ago, yeah. Yeah, I was just there. It was a ghost town. I mean, ghost town. We went to, they, they had just opened up the shows. So uh, we ended up getting tickets. I was looking, all right, this, you know, I want to go circus, circus, uh, Michael Jackson show. There was nothing out, but so I went to this magic show, this sorcerer and sorceress. This couple, I think it was a husband wife team, and the and the son was on the was on the computer doing shit, you know, nerd shit that like you do. And uh, we show nerd up. The shit, hold on, tickets. nerd shit that I do. <laughs> the tickets were a fucking buck fifty a piece. We were the only ones there. <laughs> I mean, well, well, then why did you pay a buck there, fifty a the ticket? The guy fucking hands us a fucking little fucking movie thing of popcorn you know the little fucking small one you know what i mean that you get out of the fucking romper room fucking machine the popcorn machine <laughs> he hands us the popcorn asks us if we want a soda we sit down and it's just us i'm like what the fuck are you me. kidding me you're killing me you're <laughs> killing me that's fact. i hope it's not like that fucking super bowl week I it's mean, not going to be like that Super Bowl week. I am investigating Super Bowl parties for us to go to. I think I'm more terrified that my getting back to your whole. So for those of you who don't know, we're also working on a, a movie as well to yes. launch us and then ultimately probably turn that into either a web series or whatever. But I'm going to shoot the first movie probably starting in Vegas this weekend. Oh, uh, next, week, next weekend. Yeah, I'll get. I'll so definitely we're doing get some, some scenes. Clips. We're doing some. We're we're going to be on location. Filming. We'll definitely do a few scenes while we're there. I mean, just to get All the right. location work in. Just I, I haven't worked it down. into the script, but I will. Um, Should I bring my boxing gloves for a little spa down with uh, maybe a workout session? Oh yeah, oh yeah. I'll I let you spar with. Something? I'll get you a spar with Eddie Yaya. With Eddie. Yeah, type in Eddie Yagen. Anybody feel free. No, I want him just watch to hold his the UFC fucking clip. gloves. I want him to hold the gloves and I want to fucking hit oh, the yeah, gloves and yeah. fucking hit. And, yeah. and he's, he's going over my head and I'm ducking. That's all I want. You are a lunatic. I need to get some timing. I need to timing. get back in the mix. So the premise of the first episode is very simple. Uh, pretty much the premise. Well, the premise of the whole series. I've just I figured out what our it is. What is this podcast? What is it? Gonna what be? is our what is our videos? What is what is the movie? What what who is our we? content? Who are we? I know who we are. We are on <laughs> same, a quest. Same. We are yeah, on a are quest. We still, are we on the same page? Yes, we are. You well, ready? Who are we? We are. We. I am nobody. Oh, I know who the fuck we, I am. We are we. on a quest to get. Hold on. Can I get the pointing correctly? How do I get the pointing correctly? <laughs> you, you over there, is to get you. Uh, yeah, it would be the other way, and it doesn't. 
My arm doesn't bend that way. What the um, fuck are you doing? The quest you take your medication. to get you famous. I'm already, I'm a legend in my own mind. No, 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 no. We're going to make you famous. Famous, famous. famous? Ah, you need a couple million hits on a video with people disparaging you on a constant basis on YouTube. Every they're five and a half. Me, they're going to like me. They might lived. love me. They will talk about me. They will interview me. They will give me. Oh, yeah. Uh, You're doing the talk shows. I'm not doing anything. I'm the quiet guy. Give me glory and, and power, fame, prestige, happiness, uh, a new life. Um, yeah, just status. No, that's that what, what we're doing. No, will that make me happy? Will that finally complete me? Like, you know, my boy Tom Cruise, Jerry Maguire, you know, you complete me. No, will you need you a therapist. Me? No, no, you need a therapist to find out why you need so much attention. But that's not the I'm point an of. Whore? I'm not an attention whore. You are an attention whore. Not anymore. You used to be. You used to be. You used to be. You'll get it back, though. You'll get jealous of mine. Yeah. That's like saying writers are jealous of actors or, or directors are jealous <laughs> of. <laughs> I don't know. I'm don't on air know. talent. I'm okay with being on air talent. Okay. I mean, on air talent gets you talent, late. But again, I mean, let's it's just not be who we are. Honest. Who are we? Getting back to the subject. Who are we? We're we are on a douches. quest to be famous. We are that is super the, que- the quest of this show is to do whatever possible including jackass-style stunts of getting on a roof in a shopping cart and going into a swimming pool. We are on a quest to be famous. I want to Our goal is our first... Okay, our fir- I'm going to give you, I'm gonna give you our milestones. School, the 1230 show. I want to throw watermelons off fucking buildings. Great. I'm bringing that shit back. That's great. That's great. Okay. What else I, do I want to do? You want to get into a shopping cart and go off the top of a house into a I want to do pool. jackass, fucking trailer park boys, fucking... Uh, now you got it. Boston style, Irish fucking sh- shenanigans. Yes. I want to do punked fucking uh, where's the beef? Uh, you know what I mean? Where's fucking, the whatever. beef? Whoa, 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 whoa. You just whatever's... dated half the room. What? Where's the beef? Where's the fucking beef? Okay, I'm hold on. Back. Why don't you clarify what that is for anybody under the age of 50? Where's the beef was a Wendy's commercial, I believe. Yes. Yes, it Wendy. was. It was the a little tiny old lady, it. and she the barely could talk lady. at the end. Like they, the best part was they treated her horribly and literally kept her on camera until the day she died, looking at the camera going, I know. Where's the they beef? Fucking, that was her voice, too. It up her fucking Where's the beef? Wazoo. They did kind of stick it up her wazoo, man. They, they, I, I didn't like how they treated her. Really didn't. I'm convinced so, they created elder laws based on the where's the beef lady because they stretch. So we'll give a shout out, out to her. her. Uh, you know, God be good to her up there, up there, upstairs. God be good. And what else? We, again, back, I want to be a super douche. I want to be a superhero. We're bringing back superheroes, super helping, douche. being of service, but being douchebags at the same time. Throwing watermelons off the fucking buildings. David Letterman, back in his fucking glory days. So who is our really so edgy. is so who's our Larry Bud Melman then? Again, anybody under the age of 50, Google oh, Larry, Larry Bud Melman. We Larry. need a Larry Bud Melman. We do need a Larry. We can find one. I can get a Larry. I would really like a Larry Bud Melman who is crazy, possibly schizophrenic. What possibly, about a Lenny? I got a yeah. Lenny. Okay, whatever. I, do they believe in Lenny. conspiracy theories? I really need them to believe in conspiracy theories. Okay, yeah. My new he favorite does. thing. It this, really, guy, he, this guy's a big, he's like a seven foot idiot, kind of like of Mice and Men from Lenny. Remember that? Going to the, uh, what was that? Are Wilson you line? going with, are you using Chris for this? Is your plan <laughs> no, to use no, Chris? No, no. This is a Boston guy. Okay. A Boston guy. I'm thinking Boston guy. There's we'll, a, we'll get another Boston guy to, to kind of, you know what I mean, back me up. And then maybe we'll get another California uh, yokel. Are you, you telling me the secret that I've given up my property to another Boston guy? No, no, not him. Oh, okay, no, thank God. I'm thinking of somebody else. I wouldn't have done that. I wouldn't have given no. up my. I wouldn't have given no. up my uh, personal. We might move in the big room, you and I, and then create a, another studio. <laughs> we can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Live it'll cams like, on us 24 hours like a day. Oscar and Felix, Giant man. TVs like, in the room. It's a big you know, media my center. Jumping. 
my buddy jumping. Um, uh oh, I'm getting a call on my Zoom here. Jesus Christ. You hear that? Sorry, folks. A call on your Zoom? Jesus Christ. Okay. What the fuck? I need help here. I need you fucking back here. Yeah, technologically and shit. Technologically right. speaking, you're managing to turn on the lights in the studio while I'm I gone. I know. Jesus. Should I take a phone call while we're doing a show? No, that's that's kind of <laughs> rude. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't give a fuck. <laughs> you're not here. I can do what I want. I'm in control of the studio. You the are in control of the studio. I'm I left control. my studio alone with you. <laughs> uh, it's, I it's let a rainy, homeless guy cold. live. In, I I let a homeless guy live in my place. <laughs> no, and I gave I you the studio. Guy sleep in your bed. He's starting to stink out the joint too. That's great. That's great. I'm sure he probably even found my pillows and my blankets at this point that I locked behind the door. Oh my god! I I, I hope he fucking does laundry. At least washes uh, the sheets. No, you oh can god. keep those. No, no, those are parting gifts. Those the oh, stuff okay. I left out are parting gifts. Okay. You can take those with him. <laughs> That's hilarious. So hey, we I mean, before we go any further, yeah. Fucking Brady, man. Fucking Tom Brady. Ten. Going Big ten. to number ten. Ten. Ten with a fucking hook. ten. His tenth Super Bowl in 21 years. Is that fucking I mean, think about that. Tenth Super Bowl in fucking 21 years. That's that's pretty good fucking percentage, man. That's almost 50. Yes. That's it like is almost 50% of, your, 50% of his of his career plus or minus 48.6% of his career is spent in the Super Bowl. Yes. That's fucking un- I mean, no one's going to touch his Super I mean, every time he goes back to the Super Bowl, I mean, it's just new Super Bowl records, yards, touchdowns, fucking I mean, everything. I mean, he's setting records like, I mean, no one, these records will never be broken. Never. Well, they to, won't. to quote FightNet Radio's Andrew LaPache, by the way, check out FightNet Radio, available on this network. Fight um, Night. Andrew had, he goes, yeah, he's the best fucking quarterback. This is a Raider mm-hmm. fan. He went, yeah, he's the best fucking quarterback. What do you want me to yeah. say? The only thing, he goes, the only thing Raider fans can have is the fact that we launched his career. If it wasn't for our game, there would be no Tom Brady. I went, mm, that's no what you're ball. living off there. of? You got stomped first. So mm. that's your claim to fame, being the team that got stomped first by Brady. I'm a Rams fan. I got stomped sports. by Brady. I'm a Rams It was fan. fortuitous, that snowball game. I was there in the stadium. I saw it happen. I was there. My brothers, my father, we were there. We fucking threw snowballs at each other, and in the parking lot, we fucking partied. We had a good time, man. I mean, it was just an amazing. That was the start of the run, the start of it. The start. That was the start of the Tom Brady run, and it's been. Be- it was a nice run. It's still going, man. And I am. I'm all. I'm all in. I'm all on board with the Bucks and Brady. Maybe get him number lucky seven. Lucky seven. He needs number seven. Oh, so yeah. I, so uh, lucky seven. Lucky seven. He beat the Rams. That's it? enough for can me. He beat, can he beat the young, young, young perm head? <clears throat> he beat the best team in football. I uh, think, in the NFC the, certainly. The, the I thought Green Bay. I thought Green Bay was unstoppable. However, mm. with that said, yeah, you're. It's an immovable force. I told course. you, and you did not listen. I'm starting I told to think you the box defense was legit. You was ready for, for this? I'm going to make a wow. bold prediction right now before I get to Vegas. Okay. I haven't placed my bet yet. I'm really leaning on the unders for this game. Ooh, why? I think the Bucks defense could show up and frustrate the kid, and yeah. I think Kansas City's defense will frustrate uh, him. I think they're just going to drop way back and 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 like really just dare Kansas City to run the ball against that front four. They, With they that kid? Go, they, might that go, kid? Go, they might go to a 3-4 Edwin's base. Hilaire, Hilaire, Edward, Edwards, Hilaire, Edwards, Holistic, or Edwards, yeah. Sherwin-Williams, whatever his name is in the backfield, who yeah. runs. You have two running backs in the backfield of Kansas City. You realize yeah, that, studs. right? The studs, yeah. 
you have a quarterback who runs like a running back who I hasn't know. run all season, really. He's yeah. got Edwards, Hilaire, Sherwin Williams in the backfield who ran for a thousand yards this year. Yeah. So what do you think he's going to do? He likes to throw the ball, man. Mahomes, I think that I, I honestly these little think, fucking these just you know I these, think the these RPO is going to kill you guys. type thing. No. The guy can fucking throw fucking across his body upside down, fucking drop off, fucking post seam, fucking curl. I mean, he, he can do it all. You know, stop and goes. Fucking, I mean, the dude can fucking ball. I'll give him that. I think the but, first half, Kansas City blows him out, at least two or three touchdown lead. Yeah, and then and Brady's going to march him all the, the way fucking, back in the second half. Wants the comeback. Yeah, what would be what would be the, and the steal storied, it from him again? What would be the storied, you know, uh, just ending if Grady wins this game in dramatic? And I mean, you don't get any more dramatic than twenty-eight to three down to to the Falcons and come back. I mean, what could be more dramatic, like an ending? For Brady's career, for him to finally say, "Okay, I did it all." Do it twice. I I don't think if he does, if he's down by even fourteen at the half, right? Going into the third, first possession goes to Kansas City, and he runs it down again, and they're up by three touchdowns at the start of the third. Yeah, and he brings them all the way back again with another team. Yeah. No. First of all, going into this game, he's the greatest quarterback to ever play the game. I don't care what anybody says. Everybody well, can suck dick. That's yeah. it's a it's an absolute that was the one thing that Andrew brought up. He goes, Yeah, I don't want to say it, but the fact is he's the greatest quarterback to ever play the game. He's Period. he's a god. He is a god on the gridiron. I mean, even the other players, it's just watching like you know, the the the, the ceremony, the confetti, well, you know what I mean? And the players around him were just in awe of him. They were like, Tom. You know, can I get a selfie it's with you? It's crazier know what I mean? than that. Wait, think about this. Every time a substitute comes into a game now, on yeah. any level, right, second string, third string guy, you're looking for the next Tom Brady moment out of a second, third, or fourth string quarterback this year. Like we mm. were, let's take um, the the story of what happened in San Diego with Justin, right? right. Justin is rookie of the year for the Chargers, right? Yeah. He started behind a career veteran, Tyrod Taylor, who got a punctured Mm -hmm. lung and never came back on the field. Those situations are occurring because once you've got a hot hand, everybody thinks I've got Tom Brady. Chargers got got lucky and had a Tom Brady in Justin, right? Justin came out and blew up the stats for a rookie quarterback. He beat everybody's rookie quarterback numbers. I think the thing that I'm only excited about in football is we've got the greatest rookie quarterback in the history of the game. He's beat every rookie quarterback's number in one season. Like he threw that many yards. It was yeah. insane. And mm-hmm. they still lost, which tells you how bad yeah. they suck. Um, and that's because of Tom Brady. I don't care what anybody well, says. The minute you've yeah. got a quarterback who's got a hot hand, maybe the first week, second week, by the third week, you're going, yeah, I got bad news. Tyrod Taylor. <laughs> you're on the bench punctured lung or not your third string fourth string like these retired guys who sit behind other people we're all looking for the next great quarterback to step in and and step up and it's because of tom brady it's all because of tom brady tom brady replaced drew bledsoe that's a great quarterback hey bledsoe number one draft pick gunslinger great arm Ah, got hurt sorry choice. never going back in kind of opie though you know kind of opie let's yeah. was a little opie not e- look the greatest okay so that's a good question who's the greatest <laughs> opie who's the greatest op in football and i would make the argument without a doubt it's peyton manning opie yeah he's opie fucking manning is opie his brother's fucking opie jr uh, let me give you another OP. Hmm. Let me tell how you how about, much how of an Rivers? OP his, bro- his brother might be a bigger like, OP. Have you seen Rivers? the commercial that OP Jr. is getting? Um, his brother is getting like he can't get primetime mainstream deal, he's not getting primetime commercial spots. He's oh. getting stuff like uh, oh, uh little Man- brother, yeah, Manning, Manning's brother, he's a fucking Manning. weasel. That's why 
He's getting he's got no personality. This he's is kind hilarious. Of an idiot. Here's he's his fucking... million dollar commercial spot. He got Frank's hot sauce. Oh my god! He's doing commercials. Even, even his father's getting more fucking endorsements than him. Archie, he's getting more than fucking Eli. Fucking, he was. You know what? When I think of a name for him, you know what the the name comes to mind? He's a fucking what? drip, a drip. That's what he is. Are you Eli? Hating? Are you hating because is, he's successful? I'm kind of hating him because he gra- he grabbed fucking two Super Bowls off of Brady. Which he should never have fucking got. Two fucking unbelievable lucky fucking out of horseshoe out of your asshole fucking catches. One off the fucking helmet, the other off the fucking sideline, juggling the fucking thing. Lucky, lucky, lucky balls. And and fucking the defense. That's what did it. That fucking front four for the Giants. That's what fucking beat Brady. Back in fucking two to their perfect fucking season. Down the fucking shithole. But moving on. Not resentful. But so, Eli is, I will say it. Eli, if you're out there, you're fucking drip. Yeah, like Eli's listening to this show. That's happening. <laughs> he will. Oh, he will. <laughs> See? Hence the point of this show to make him. Hold on. I want he Eli famous. to fucking hear that he's a drip from me. Once I do that, I will be complete. Yet, okay, did, I'm gonna I'm gonna help you out you on this me? one because did you hear me? When Eli hears it that he's a drip from me, I will be complete. Thank you. I have no. experience on this topic. You do. And thinking that you're gonna be able to walk up to someone, let's say, based on my experience. A professional fighter oh. and saying something really whacked out in their face. Oh. <laughs> what, I'll get whacked out? Awkward. 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 So I got to watch my P's and Q's and what I'm saying? No. Um, but I have definitely gotten, within the last, I can even say this, within the last year, I've done it one other time with a guy who fought Tyson Fury. There's a guy who fought Tyson Fury who's from, I don't know, Finland or wherever the hell he's from. Yeah. Um, and he took him 12 rounds, cut him up. He did a really good job. He took the number one fighter in the world, took him deep water, cut him up, got real close, probably should have gotten the stoppage on a TKO. Um, and after the fight, everybody asked him the same bullshit questions. And I looked at the press people and I said, I'm going to go viral. And they went, are you just talking out loud? I said, no. I'm going to ask him questions that nobody wants to ask him. And so I got up there and I went, okay, how do we leverage this? And so I just kept going at it to the point where his manager had to jump up there. His team got up and they were all standing behind him shouting out answers. Like I was challenging them to explain to me how this guy was going to be something after this fight. And basically his managers, and I kept saying, no, you're going to have to fire your team and go to work for like the PBC or Bob Arum and top rank, or you're going to have to go to work for a big organization. And they're like, no, we could stay independent. People will come to us. And I said, no, they won't. First of all, you cut up the number one contender in the world. Nobody's going to fight you. Mm -hmm. Um, And to the point where finally the manager goes, well, we could be the champion of Finland. And I went, right. That's exactly what you can be the champion of Finland, which means nothing when it comes to making money. And I said all that, and it was like basically a drop the mic and walk off. Now, let's jump ahead a year later or a year and a half later. He's finally back on the scene. He's signed yeah. with a major boxing organization so that he can get paid to fight instead of being the champion of Finland. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And everything I said actually happened to the point where one of my co-hosts was with me, and he goes, boy, did you nail that one? I said, it was obvious. Mm-hmm. It was <clears throat> obvious what was going to happen to him i'm just shocked that nobody else called him on his shit it's still real sketchy when you've got a professional boxer who thinks you're being personal with him uh his management his team uh the people from the organization all standing around and everybody feeling a little weird and sketchy all around you where they're getting an uncomfortable vibe and you're still going at it like balls deep you're pounding it like you own that pussy so you ruffled his feathers, and the, and the management team got all nervy, 
and, and freaky and what you know you were right when a seven foot heavyweight boxer gets off of his stool during the interview and starts to bow up you should get a little sketchy yeah you uh, should you, you should have hair stand up if you own were you hair. scared no 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 we're <laughs> no. scared I've looked Chuck Liddell in the face and asked him really crazy fucking questions oh, in the I day when Chuck that. Liddell was known for punching. So here's a little known Chuck Liddell fact that I know. Yeah. Chuck Liddell learned how to fight by fighting people when he was a Cal Poly slow by just going into the parking lot. Like it was a well-known thing on the campus when he was a wrestler, like yeah. he would fight people for money, anyone, yeah. or if wow. somebody just wanted to fight, he'd go, yeah, cool. And, I know someone who was basically at a Taco Bell with him when a dude showed up and went, yeah, I'll fight you. And they were yeah, literally standing, standing in line at Taco Bell. Yeah. And he goes, all right, uh, here's what my order is. And Chuck took the dude out back, beat him up, and then yeah. came back in and ate his Taco Bell order like it was nothing. He also uh, famously, let me, I've never said this on air, famously, he would bang any woman that wanted to have sex with him. Chucky? Yeah. He was a whore, and he really fucked ugly chicks. He fucked anything. He, wow. Anything. That, last fight, that last fight between him and Tito was fucking lame ass. Did you watch that last one? Well, because you can't put it down. Look, if I fought right, well, when I fight you, it's going to be lame ass. I don't want to break it to anybody. Yeah. I no, was scheduled. No, I will carry the fucking fight. You may fucking get your licks in, but it's going to be a fucking show. Okay. <laughs> It may not be a physical, like, professional display of, of technical <laughs> boxing. and No, it will be a fucking show. Something will happen. Because I, I, I have it in my blood. I can fucking rise to the occasion. Whatever, whatever, whatever needs to be done, I will do. You're that drunk guy. <laughs> I was telling this to a friend here in Hawaii. And, and what they say? We, well, I was talking Who to him about this. We were talking about this, and they said, how do you think it'll go? I said, oh, I said, on paper, uh, it's even a great premise for all of our videos of secretly we're training to fight to have this thing that'll ultimately make us famous. I yeah. think it would be funnier to try to get you to fight one of the Paul brothers, which is even funnier in my universe, but we'll, we'll discuss that at a later time. And this person asked me, um, uh, well, I just what's a fight? What's a, the question was, the I question just need was, to piss off. maybe fucking Eli will fight me. The, <laughs> <laughs> that's not a hard struggle. That, he's tough. He's tough. I'll give him that. Dude's I will taking, beat that fucking ass. He's been taking will, a beating for a long time. beat his ass. I don't care. What's he, 6'4", fucking 6'3", 6'2". I'm 5'10", 190. I'm Andre Agassi fucking build. I will run over him. In the last year, let's just go with the last year. In the last year where I've been in bad situations, mm. right? There has never been a thought of my mind of, oh, I'm going to double underhook him and take him to the ground with a really awesome belly to belly rolling uh, roll on top. You know, jujitsu. We're not doing fucking wrestling. I, I understand that. This fighting. was a discussion I had. Keep up. I, I, this was a discussion I was having. I said, that's not what happens in a real fight. I said, what really happens, and I can say firsthand, is you just punch him in the throat. And yeah, the person looked fight. at in me and said, fight. you would punch a human in a throat? I said, or stick the back end of a spoon into somebody's throat. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Why would I even hurt my knuckles? If you take yeah. the flat end of the knife or a spoon or a fork and you just right there or just <laughs> really quick, fight's over. Fight's over. Fight's over. <laughs> That's it. Didn't hurt my hand at all. You can stick your middle <laughs> finger right there and it yeah, fights over. Yeah. Yeah, but I might break a finger. And considering the number of broken fingers and jams that I have already, I'm not into it. All right. The one and only time where it occurred, the, the throat punch, uh, which is literally a two year old could pull off. I mean, the only thing I've ever taught my daughter is probably a jab and a kick to the groin. That's all I've ever taught my daughter. Learn to jab, mm. kick in the groin run very fast yes my i i suppose that if i had a finishing sequence of events it would be uh punch to the throat kick in the groin um and then tie him up in a knot and wait for the police to arrive that mm. would probably be in real time 
honestly, when you punch somebody in the throat, because you really need to see it live to see how great it actually is. Mm-hmm. Um, people look like you broke their larynx or something. Yeah. All you really did was bruise it and they can't breathe. I mean, what's the big deal? Yeah. Stop being yeah. a bitch. <laughs> magic dirt, magic dirt, magic dirt. Mm-hmm. Do you and ever get go, magic usually, dirt? Usually they hit the ground too, right? Yeah. Oh, no. They just grab their throat, maybe go to one knee, but honestly, yeah, they if always... You, if you hit them, if you, if you take out their knee or hit them in the ball and kick them in the balls, then they're down in the fucking... They're, they're humped over. They're lump. They're just a lump. Uh, generally, ball. my experience for a ball shot is fetal position. Fetal. Fetal. And You're a if dirty any fighter. of you are, are you wondering, wow, fighter? that's... Are you a dirty street fighter? Yeah. Because there's no it. such thing as there's no such thing as a clean street fight. There's no such thing. I'm putting your head yeah. through a windshield. I yeah. is this a debate? <laughs> yeah, there's no there's no like you know like okay put Did up. Did you pick up a bottle at the bar and hit that dude over the side of the head? Yeah, works just yeah. like a club. Hope yes. the bottle was full with a top on it. Would have been the shillelagh, right? Yeah, you just stick it right in his friggin' eyeball. Mm. Lee, that's yes. cowardly. Yes. Good. It is cowardly. It's awesomely cowardly. It's awesomely cowardly. I'm yes. completely okay with it. Look at Ray Donovan. He, he, he get out of the trunk with the baseball bat, and it's, do you want the bat or do you want the bag? Do you want yeah. the bag or the bat? Right. One or the other. One or the other. One or the other. It's as simple mm-hmm. as that. Yeah. It, uh, so that brings up the question: Did you ever get magic dirt as a kid? I was explaining this again this week to someone. Oh yeah, bring that. Yeah, what? Well, no, I, I never have. Okay, so did you play little league baseball, soccer, any of that? Did you play uh, kids' sports I at all? As a kid, been oh, played basketball. Shit. You're another boxing. fucking another Andrew. All right, you wouldn't have magic dirt. So in soccer, baseball, and football, mm-hmm. um, when you get hurt, there's the walk it off. Right. We all know the walk it off. Yeah. Right. Oh, I got a Charlie horse. Walk it off. Right. You get hurt. You're crying as a kid. Walk it off. You'll be fine. Breathe, breathe. That, that was coaching, taking care of you back in the day. The other was magic dirt, magic dirt, magic dirt. For those of you who don't know, please feel free. This is probably the clip we're going to use magic dirt. Welcome to magic Magic Dirt. dirt. Magic. dirt. So this is a parenting tip and a coaching tip. If you're working with kids outside, you use magic dirt. Mm -hmm. So here's what you do. A kid scrapes his knee while playing playing soccer. He gets fouled while playing soccer. You're playing baseball. He gets a baseball to the side of the head. Um, In football, you're a lineman and you get get a finger bent backwards. Magic dirt. And here's how it works. You as the coach or the parent run out there, console the child, right? This okay. won't work with anybody. Actually, the person who I told this story to was in high school when he saw magic dirt. So I'm going to safely say this works up to the age of 17. <laughs> Runs out and you rub magic dirt on it really hard on the wound or the area affected. And you say, this is magic dirt. Mm-hmm. And they're usually so blown away that you're just rubbing shitty ground dirt on them that it distracts them from the problem. Mm. Uh, Here's how crazy it is. I told this story once in a cocaine fueled rager in 1992 to a buddy of mine. And we were talking about magic dirt and he looked at me and he goes, (laughs) let me tell you a story from three years ago or four years ago when we were in high school, he goes, uh, one of our linemen bent his finger back. He uh, Literally, I watched Coach run out to the field, grab a handful of dirt, looked at the dude straight in the eye, started rubbing dirt on it, and he said, magic dirt, magic dirt, look at me, look at me, look at me, magic dirt, grabbed his finger and cranked it back into place. Nice. And I went, magic dirt. Magic dirt. <laughs> magic dirt. <laughs> Feel free, magic parents. Legs. Magic dirt like, always works. Like Forrest Gump. Well, I, as I was writing the movie that we're in, one of I want to redo the Rocky Four. Uh, what is it? Rocky Five. The beginning of Rocky Five's intro, which is mm-hmm. the end of Rocky Four with him getting beat up and then him standing in the shower shaking. <clears throat> right. I want to replay that entire scene with you, with me being the Rocky. Because guess what? We only have footage of me actually fighting in a real fight. Not you. 
Um, if we did, we'd use you. Uh, but we can we can do the whole black and white of me getting punched or thrown around or whatever. But I want to do the whole shaking, yo, go get Killian. And I want you to walk in and pull out a bag of dirt out of your out of your sweatsuit. Oh. You did good, kid. You did you did Apollo real proud. No, you don't understand, Killian. I, I can't stop shaking. I can't remember when Mick said. He sometimes feel like he fought so hard, he broke something inside of him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you doing the, yeah, of course, kid. Yeah, yeah. I, I, can't, I can't stop shaking. And then I want you to reach in and pull out a Ziploc bag full of dirt and look at me coldly and go, Rocky Marciano gave me this bag of dirt, kid, just for this moment. Mm-hmm. And pull it out and start rubbing it on my head. Just nice. so I can look at you for the comedy moment of, is that fucking dirt? <laughs> i love it magic dirt magic dirt there's the callback for the podcast people when you see the scene okay unless this turns into an archive moment where you wrote that and you ruined that joke for us when we saw the video yes i did yes, and that's why you should listen to the podcast yeah the the actual video of magic dirt will probably make it i'm gonna take a mousetrap to vegas and try it out on the strip I'm thinking Mouse of uh, trap. Mousetrap Dude. Live. Mousetrap Live. Yeah, can we do that? Yeah, I'd like to try that. Mousetrap Mouse. on the strip? Would people Mouse bring their dogs to Vegas? The strip. We can we do bring that. two lawn chairs. Well, let's set it up. You need two lawn chairs and a mousetrap. Yeah. For those of you wondering, never heard mousetrap, go check the archives. Um, but I'll set it up. We're going to go down somewhere around Planet Hollywood, right on the strip. Put up oh. two lawn chairs, right? And put a mousetrap down with a piece of cheese on it. And wait for people who are walking their dogs on the strip, right? We're just sitting there. We'll have our video camera, like mm-hmm. we're doing a show, and wait for the inevitable snap. Yes. Oh, right? <laughs> <laughs> I will then open up the little ice chest that we have sitting between us with a bag of mm-hmm. ice in it. Nice. And I'll pop open an extra chair for the hot <clears throat> chick. Yeah. And I will say, hey, hot chick, why don't you sit down? What kind of asshole would leave a mouse trap? And have a waiting lawn chair. Wow, crazier still, a bag full of ice for a dog in this moment. I'm just lucky to have it. What's your name? What hotel room are you staying at? Do you want to fuck? <laughs> wow. Gold. Gold, gold Jerry. Jerry. It's gold, Jerry. Gold. No, no, even better. Douche, Jerry. Douche, Douche. Jerry. <laughs> so instead of saying gold, we just say douche. Douche. Douche Lee. What a douche. douche Frank. Oh my God. Killian. I don't want to, I don't want to get video releases, but you and I sitting on the strip in two lawn chairs with the video camera just looking at people coming and voting and oh, having, and having we, Olympic I, scorecards of what we won't not even be writers. It'll just write itself. I mean, just the commentary. I mean, the, the wackos, the, the spazos, the, the freaks, the geeks. Well, downtown the, for sure. Downtown. I mean, bachelorettes. I, want, I mean, the, the, the brides. I mean, I got, be- I got married in Vegas, you know what I mean? And, and back then it was, you know, it was just, uh, you know, you see the brides, you see the party, you see the, yeah, the you know, it's, it's, it's Vegas, baby. It's, it's, it's fucking insane. I didn't get married in Vegas. I got married in Oceanside in a blackout, then broke up in Vegas. Ooh. Broke up in a in blackout. Vegas. Yeah, wow. well, yeah. We'll I'm supposed to do someday. the paperwork in Vegas. I don't know what happened. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 48 hours later, divorced. I'm on a bus, passed out. I don't know what yeah. happened. You can get divorced in Vegas pretty quickly. Yeah. I'm tired of buying rings. I got to be honest at this oh, point. Oh, God. It's Never over. Never again. It's over, Jerry. Douche. Don't be a douche. Don't be a douche, Jerry. All right. So what did we learn today from today's show? Well, uh, we're, we're still we still got to get into more Super Bowl Super Bucks. That's definitely um, this week. We got the T-shirts at Just Frank and Killian here, so check out our merchandise. Yeah, those are those are I, getting I ready super, to go. I, I need a Super Douche Super Bowl T-shirt. I know I I know we got the the trademark. The, the I can't. The, well, the logo. problem with getting shirts is I can't get them to you before Super Bowl, which is why I didn't order us T-shirts. <clears throat> they won't yeah. get here in time. So I'm going to look while I'm in Vegas for somebody to print shirts and see if I can get something printed. So I want to can... get some. I, I Actually, I'm going to go to the mall. <clears throat> Here's what I'll do from my end. Okay. 
I need you to email me our logo so I can bring it to a fucking hat shop. I want to get a couple hats made up. Oh, snapbacks. I want the snapback hats. So <laughs> get me that fucking logo. Well, okay. Something- uh, do you want to borrow a very famous fight net radio bit that has not been used in literally, let's see, 2006. So it hasn't been used in eight years. I can, I can gift you over a fight net radio gag for this weekend. That is the best of all time. Let's do it. You take I a video take camera. I'll, I'll set it up for the podcast people. All what right, you do, up, what we used to do is go to Vegas for the fights, right? With our video cameras and all our stuff. And we would record people and ask them questions about the fight. But we wouldn't ask guys. We'd ask their dates at the fight. So we'd Ooh. ask them question like, hey, so it would be a fight between, let's say, uh, this is a true one. Uh, Oscar De La Hoya and Floyd Mayweather. Okay. <clears throat> and then we would show up and say things to the women like, do you think Lennox Lewis is going to win the heavyweight championship tonight? And inevitably we get the, yeah, of course. So you're a big Lennox Lewis fan. And that's why you're here tonight. Ah, oh, yeah. Yeah. We and used he's to not call it, fighting. Yeah. Oh yeah. We call it three stupid questions. We call it three <laughs> stupid questions. Yeah. 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 It was, I think we should do the same thing. Just walk down the street and ask super hot women who are clearly here with their boyfriends for the weekend and go, yeah. oh, do you think the Chargers are going to win the Super Bowl on Sunday? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you a Justin Herbert fan? Do you listen to Just Frank and Killian? You need to say that on camera and you could win up to $10,000. Boom. I oh, like no. it. Oh, no. It's, it's everything you think it'll be. So we got to have lights. Do we need a third party? <laughs> or is it just going to be you and I filming ourselves? I got it. Yeah, well, we can do that. I'm, I, I have a tripod, but that's not the point. Um, I'm oh, you got the tripod. A third party for Vegas that we wouldn't both find irritating uh, after yeah. 24 hours. Yeah, you're probably right. How long before Chris becomes irritating? Two days. Well, we're only there for two days. Um, yeah. I could probably get Miguel to come out and shoot it from Fight Net Radio. He is a videographer. He does video. If I told him that it was... Miguel's a pretty laid-back dude. And we can ply him with drinks. He's pretty easy. Mm -hmm. I'll ask him on Monday when I shoot Fight Net Radio. We're doing live Fight Net Radio Super Bowl week from Las Vegas. Nothing says boxing like talking about Super Bowl while in Vegas, while staring at the bubble at the MGM Grand. Thank you. That was a tough sentence to say. I know. You did well. Yeah. Kudos. So uh, the video that's getting clipped from here is clearly Magic Dirt. Magic um, Dirt. And maybe Ma- and, and Mousetrap Part 2. Mousetrap. Using the Mousetrap. On- Mousetrap in Vegas. Mousetrap uh, on Las Vegas Boulevard. Bits of Magic Dirt. And spit works too, by the way. You can do spit Super as douche. well as Magic Dirt. The intro to Super Douche. Wow. There you go. And I got to take a shit again. Uh, There you go. Ah. It's not as fun for you when I'm not there live. You don't laugh as hard. I I, kind of don't, but, uh, you know, it'll be nice to laugh in Vegas to get some laughs. I'm looking forward to the drive again through the desert. Bring the clubs. Bring the clubs. I got the clubs. I will get our Just Killian, uh, Just Frank and Killian hats. Cool. And just... Let me know what else we oh need. Oh, my God. We should record us playing golf. Oh. Yep. We're so bad at golf. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. It's going to look like, a, what's the movie with Charlie Sheen, Navy Seals? We'll do the, we'll yeah. recreate Navy Seals on the golf course. Yeah. Where we're playing polo with the golf carts on the Paiute Reservation. Yeah. Definitely have to get arrested while we're in Vegas. That's got to happen, too, probably. Yes. So much. We'll still play Scott. Yes. Uh, Still, please, Scott. And click. Do you have a heart condition? Hey, kids, we got a treat for you today. <laughs> click the, click the, click the, click the button, uh, the like, share, whatever button. Um, definitely like us, subscribe. hate us, whatever you just do something for us. Uh, support us. The videos are in. great, but we would love the people who watch the videos to uh, go and definitely. Uh, subscribe Share. to the podcast. You definitely subscribe. get double bang. 
Spread the word. We're coming. We're going to be boxing each other. I'm going to box your fucking brains out. It's about you being famous. That is the premise of our it. The I want to be a famous douche. Oh, you will. Uh, I want to douche out. I'm, I'm douche. determined to watch you go viral and see what you do with it when a million people write negative comments about you. I don't care about them. I have a, a, a thick skin. Yeah, everybody thick says skin. that. I, I thought I did too. I did. I really thought I did. Well, I really you can be a douche too. I mean, you, you know, you're going to get some negative shit too, you know, even though you're the fucking technical advisor and, you know, you think you're, fu- you're smarter than you fucking think you are. You know what I mean? I, I'm definitely smarter than I think I am. Yeah, you are. So just, do just you realize you want to rewind that sentence again. Fucking tougher, and I'm smarter than I smarter. think I am. Yeah. <laughs> That's the greatest line ever. I, that's a t-shirt. I'm smarter than I think I am. You are. I am. <laughs> oh, my God. Click, it's like, you. subscribe, I share. I fucking know you. And oh. there's, I got your fucking oh. number. And when we get inside that fucking ring, I am going to fucking tear your fucking ass up. Oh, you're back on it again. Jesus. Yeah, that's... By the way, what you're looking at on the screen is the premise for the first movie that I'm shooting with the two of us. There's no other premise to this movie other than this. There is only this. I don't even know what he's doing. He looks like he's having a spastic meltdown. Fucking tired. Yeah, right. <laughs> Got to learn to relax. Let me give you a tent. You know, I have a tennis coach. Let me give you a tennis euphemism here. Learn to relax. Don't squeeze so tight. Well, squeeze. I was fucking pretty, pretty flowing. With no, those you're flowing. tight as I can see it from here. You're tight. And I'm on video and I'm telling you, you're too tight. I got a shadow box, shadow box in the fucking mirror. There you go. Need to work on your cardio. Have you thought about taking up tennis? I'm telling you, you're fucking good for your footwork. Shape. You don't eat very well. I don't eat well at all. Why do you think I've I'm going to more, Vegas? I've done fucking eight times the amount of sports that you've done. Even though you you got the the fight training in your background, it ain't gonna take me long to catch up. I'll tell you. You were a D, you were a D one wrestler. It ain't gonna take me long. We're not wrestling, motherfucker. We're boxing. You may try to fucking clinch me, but they'll, they'll, we're not having those fucking small ass fucking UFC gloves. We're going fucking middleweight gloves. I'm sorry. At this moment, I am uh, remembering what the great and high Mike Tyson would say in this situation. Do you know the quote or do I need to repeat it for you? Let's hear it. Everyone has a plan till they get hit. Mm hmm. I don't mind getting hit. See, that's the thing. You're dumb white people. Deep down, you're just dumb Can white people. Can you even fucking hit me? I'm fucking fast, motherfucker. Do you realize deep down you're dumb white people? Can you even fucking, can you catch me? Are you, you're just going to stand around and fucking jab? Yeah. I'll take All day. a fucking jab to get All day. inside you. And like just Klitschko. Fucking, like fucking, like you said. Like Vladimir like Klitschko. Said, I'm going to stand up as tall as I can, tycoon, as far back as I can, fucking, a and throw a jab off. Let me I'm tell you exactly what your day <laughs> looks like. Let me tell who's you exactly the what the day in the ring is going to look like with me. Okay. All right. Who who was the guy that fucking the Boston guy that fought Tyson when he got out of jail? Fucking what was Peter his name? McNeely. Peter McNeely. Peter McMeat. Peter. He goes. I'm going to put you in a fucking cocoon of terror. <laughs> that was his quote. I am a, a holder cocoon. and a clutcher, so I have. I really, honestly, if Are I you compare grab my and fights, clutch and be a pussy. I fight like. Tyson Fury. I'm a holder. Oh. Oh. I'm going to maul you in the corner. No, you're not fucking holding me. I will yeah. not allow it. Okay. You will have a ref, and I picked the ref. Okay. No clinches at all. He's Again, we found in. another He's job for Chris. A lot of this. Chris is Stop rapidly break. becoming our Larry Stop Bud punching. moment. Stop punching. Stop holding. Stop. Obey my commands at all times. I can yeah. get a real California State Athletic Commission person to ref that. to get yeah, in there yeah okay i know a real one all right i kind of want big john but uh i don't think we can i can get, get big john i can also but big john is gonna be okay when i throw you down to the ground too no 
Big John. Big John's uh, an MMA guy. We don't want Big John. I know a honest to God. I know two California referees. Okay, we'll get somebody. As long as it's considered amateur and I'm not technically a pro, so it doesn't really affect anybody. You're going to ruin my pro career. I won't ever be able to fight pro if I get a real referee. Okay. Oh, is that the deal? You know, at this point in my life, at my age, those the chances of me turning pro are going out the window. Yeah. Could also be well, the concussion. This will be this will be the swan song. Maybe we'll, and again, if it if it goes to plan, if it goes again, Why do you think I'm going to see Eddie Yaya. You think I'm going to go see Eddie Yaya because he's going to be nice to me? Yeah. Eddie Yaya you know, is maybe, my fight trainer. What what about Rough and Rowdy on Bostels? You think they'll they'll fucking pick us up? No. No, we don't want to do rough and rowdy. Uh, I don't have a problem with it. I honest to God don't. I don't have a problem with any of that horse shit. I've done it. Um, yeah. But Marshall, I think I think we are too. I I can safely say this: we're going to be way more controversial and way more out on the deep end than Barstool would allow. Yeah, I'm okay. I'm just warming up. I have a complete plan of where I'm diving into the swimming pool on this project and how to make it work. All right. So we're just going, we're going balls to the wall. We're going fucking shock. I'm not saying that they wouldn't, or they wouldn't be cool with us or they wouldn't unleash us on West coast people to go interview for them. That would just be smart on their part. Okay. Because I am smarter than I think I am. Um, Smarter than you think you are. (laughs) That's a fucking t-shirt. Such a great line. Such (laughs) a great line. That could be the that could be hashtag you're smarter than you think you are. Yeah. I am yeah. smarter than I think I am. <laughs> I really want to take the camera out and uh see if you can take a video camera out and get laid with just a video camera, if that will just dupe a female into having sex with you in Vegas. Mm. Yeah. Be prepared I'll to film, hold the camera. I'll film you doing that. How's I'm that? sure you will. I'm sure you will. I'll film you doing that. I'll do the superstar poses while I'm. Yeah. Eh, I will eh. be. I will be your cameraman. How's that? Oh my god, that's so creepy. No, I mean, I'll be your cameraman to see you see your line and see you. You know, I'm not coming to the fucking bedroom. You fucking is pervert. your question whether or not I can pick up in Vegas? That's not. Well, a question. I, I think I know. I think I know that you can, but I want to see. I want to see it. I mean, I hear a lot of talk. I haven't seen it though. I think you're fucking smarter than you Do think you are. Do I need to give life advice on picking up? Do I need to give life fucking everything in your own realm of your mind? Okay. I'm going to give life advice on picking up right here. Okay. I'm going to end the here show on life advice. Let's hear it. Step number one. What is the highest female level you've ever achieved on a scale of one to 10? And that's got to include their personality, their craziness, everything. Like what's the highest number you've ever gotten to? If you were ranking women. Like a 10? Are we ranking now? Have you really pulled off a real 10? No. Right. What's the highest you've gone? Eight? You're still in the elk. You are literally still big game hunting at eights. Yeah. Those are lawyers, doctors, nurses, people who have real day jobs, who have real personalities, who can hold Mm -hmm. a conversation that aren't completely batshit crazy. Um etc cetera, etc cetera. you could take them anyway and here's another qualifier men mm-hmm. if you can take them anywhere and they don't embarrass you ever mm. and you've given them three or four drinks and they still don't embarrass you mm. or get you thrown out i think you're automatically disqualified if you take a female somewhere they drink too much and you get asked to leave because of their behavior wow that yes absolutely. which by the way has happened that's happened to you oh <laughs> ring bearers buddy ring bearers wow yeah damn yeah that should have been a red flag right there those are deal breakers but i deal. digress all right gentlemen everybody listening to the show is probably men already excluding our one female listener and i apologize to her but i'm going to teach you male insight so you figure out the highest number you can get to. Yeah. 
Highest number here's, I've been here's at. Here's the thing, though. Here's the thing. Are there going to be a lot of chicks in Vegas, man? A lot of single girls. Any female I, in Vegas is fair game. I, I'm going to say they're no. local for I all I care. There's going to be a lot of honeys. I think if you see honeys, they're going to be with boyfriends. So, number one, you pick yeah. the highest number you can hit, which in my case, the highest I've gone is an eight. Okay. You've hit the nines, the nines and the tens are not nines and tens in my universe because they had such dramatic mental flaws. Mm -hmm. Dramatic. They they dropped that down to 7.5. Yeah, pretty much. Um, Okay. So the highest of their booze hounds and their whatever intellectually challenged. Yeah. Or if they say questions, wait, here's another one that makes me really crazy. Could you explain that to me? Because I don't understand the words that just came out of your mouth. Wow. If it isn't a language gap between the two of us, and it is literally because I used big words, yeah. that is not a good moment. That's, I mean, how do we, uh, how do you even go get past that? Uh, if they're hot, you'll overlook if a lot hot, of shit. You can look past it. How big are their then, tits? I mean, really, yeah. is this a debate? Yeah. I bought rings on this principle. Now, the highest I've ever gone to and also ring purchased on uh, Mm -hmm. is definitely a solid eight across the board, maybe even a nine. Yeah. Um, Bought a ring, screwed it up on my own. They didn't screw it up. I screwed it up. Okay. Yeah. Um, Now, when I'm trying to just get laid, right, Mm -hmm. you knock it down two positions to a six. Here's the number one mistake I see in men when it comes to dating or not dating, getting laid. There's a huge difference. Dating, dating you don't go out and you look different for things. If Being you're dating and you're yeah. keeping, you're not getting looking. Getting married. All right. different. Right. Different fucking different scenario. And trust me, you're not meeting her in a bar. You're meeting her somewhere casual and cool. Probably something work related if you're lucky. So like you, on the sidewalk when she fucking snaps the fucking mouse trap with her doggy. Well, and that that's getting late. Yeah, that's definitely that's okay. just that's in the getting late. That's not into I'm interested in her. She's I'm I'm intrigued by her. Intrigued. Okay, so if I'm looking to get laid, I start at an eight, I back it down to a six. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. This is the number you and I both know some people uh around us. All right, the ice man goes down to two. I've had this discussion. <laughs> I've had this discussion. <laughs> I've had Check this discussion with friends. I've literally had this discussion with friend of ours, friends of ours. And yeah. my my answer to them was this. You're not going to get the woman that you picture in your mind. So you need to stop. Like okay. you're not. First of all, if your daily average of hitting women is at a six, then yeah. back it down to a four, cowboy. Let's face reality. Mm-hmm. You're wolf, uh, if you're a dude and you're wolf ugly and you're like 40 or 50, you're not getting a 21 year old hot piece of ass from you know Pacific Beach. That's just not yeah. happening. No, right? unless you're fucking loaded. Unless you're loaded. Yeah. But this then isn't then a discussion of money. That changes things. Well, yes, it, <laughs> we can do a whole show on how to fake having money to get laid, but. It's really not worth it. It's a lot of effort. Let's not let's not go there. That's all right. I gotta take a shit and I'll start laughing again. That one's really good. All right. So I'm already I can feel the turtle fucking coming out here. Figure out your average number of the women that normally go out with you once they get to know you, like your real dead zone number. For me, it's Mm -hmm. about a seven and a half to an eight, somewhere in that range. All right. So that's it. I've had really hot fiancés and wives. That's pop sirloin for you. I've had I've had some great great top end. Great top end. Top end out of the butcher shop fucking right. cut. But if I'm nice, being fair and I'm picking eight. out the number that I can hit all day long based Seven on my five, age looks demographic eight. and this is important date age appropriately. I cannot stress this enough people. Date, date age, age appropriately. Date in your age bracket. 10 up, 10 down. 10 up, 10 down. That's it. 10 up, 10 up, 10, 10 down. down. Period. 10, 10 up, up 10, down. 10 down. 10 up, 10 down. Ooh. This is another problem for men. Oh, I'm getting into it with my secretary. That's new pussy, bro. We're back to the mm-hmm. puppy scenario. You're just yeah. taking a new puppy home. You are. 10 up, 10 down. 10 up, 10 down. Okay. 
Did you follow I'm trying to rule? give everybody the highest percentages of getting laid. 10 up, 10 down. Okay. Okay. Number two, up, you're looking for a smoker. A smoker? Smokers are 67% more likely to have sex on the first date. Cigarette smokers? Yeah. Get the fuck out of here. 67% more likely to have sex first date. Cigarette smokers? Yeah. 67% more likely. 67% more likely to have sex first date. Would you, would you hear that, Cosmo? No, they make studies on everything, dude. They make studies on everything. Why am I the only one who reads numbers and lives by numbers? Wow, 67%. Wow. Holy moly. Didn't know that. Yeah, 67%. And why okay. is that? Why? Reason? I have no idea. I didn't have to read any further in the story. I don't care the background of it. <laughs> You're fucking beautiful. <laughs> I don't have time to read five pages of technical data. I have no time for technical data. You're smarter than I thought you were. I am. (laughs) I don't have time for that. It gets stored up here and then I'll get a headache. Oh my God. See, there's a difference between you and I. See, I need to know why and you don't, you just don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck. What's the numbers? 67%. You are a douche. Give me the numbers. I'm a numbers guy. I'm a fucking douche. What's the number? So I want women above, and historically, women above women, the age of 40 as well. Women, I can fuck very easily. Uh, so, douche. women above the age of 40. Wait, I'm going to narrow this down. Women above the age of 40 <laughs> who smoke. I got to take, take a shit. <laughs> women above the age of 40 who smoke. Oh, my God. They stink, though. Now, I here's how. Smoke. Shut up. Who cares? You're getting laid. So, oh. here is how you do it. Okay. You can normally hit sevens or eight. Great. Back it down to a six. Ah, oh, Lee, she's ugly. She's wolf ugly, bro. Fives and sixes are not pretty people. Just relax. This is about getting yeah. laid. Yeah. Um, back it down to a five or a six, right? Mm-hmm. Then drop it one more place. Down to so a four? Let's use our friend Lurch as a discussion. Okay. Lurch wants to get laid. For those yeah. of you who don't know Lurch, and we've never discussed him, this is just inside talk between the two of us. So Lurch wants to get laid. Yeah. Okay. Lurch. Lurch, the best you've probably ever gotten in your life ever. Yeah. Is probably a four, maybe a five. Yeah. I need you to back this down to a three. And then I okay. want you to go one lower to a one. All right, so friend- give me some examples of celebrities that are a three. Uh, there aren't any. Yes, oh, are. no, not true. No, they're celebrities. Roseanne. There aren't any. There aren't any. Why? Because the first person I would think of is that fat, ch- the fat black chick who got the Academy Award, who Precious. never got work again because she's fat. Precious. Precious. Right. Yes. You ever hear from her ass? No, because she's, she's dying from working. diabetes. No, she's, she's oh. fat and she's dying in some corner, probably 500 pounds of her fat fuck self. Truth is, there's a skinny white dude somewhere with a big, long dick that's willing to have sex with her. That's true. Just true. for the celebrity. Right. Just like I and show, skinny, like, oh, you bang, skinny you bang guys Eleanor, fat bang, chicks. Would you I don't bang know what fucking uh, Bruce Jenner? I mean, yeah. Maybe maybe not the best I'd example. Bang, I'd bang Bruce Jenner. That's not even a debate. Like, I'm no, too hot don't. for Bruce Jenner, to be honest. Yeah. You can do better. Because you're smarter and fucking better looking than you think you are. All that shit is a state of mind. Billy Joel, state of mind. Honestly, when women wind up having sex with me early in a relationship. I think I am state of mind. You can trick your mind into believing your own own stuff. Here's how I know this to be true. I have a friend named James. Yeah. James is the biggest, laziest, filthiest weirdo piece of human flesh that I know of. His mm-hmm. biggest thing in life was living in a trailer with his grandmother and eating cheesy cheddar puffs like mm-hmm. Cartman, right? Mm-hmm. He, in fact, is, was so fat at one point that he believed he was having a heart attack when he was just having indigestion and mm-hmm. that messy of a human, okay? He found a woman that would have sex with him and marry him, which wow. tells me there is a shoe for every foot, no matter what you think, no matter your personality, no matter how negative you are in life, there is a shoe for your foot. 
Oh. The problem is you believe that you should be able to buy a pair of Gucci shoes and slide those bad boys on and drive those around the block. Look, not everybody can drive a Ferrari. Sorry. No. It's just yeah. I've driven a Ferrari and it's a lot of fun. Personally, I like a Ferrari that's being used a little bit. It's got a little bit of mileage and it's a much better ride. But if you're asking me what I want for a daily driver, I want a Honda. I want reliable service every time. That's just dating advice. Dating 101. Right. But we're talking about we're talking about fucking and renting a car. Yes. So everybody thinks that they're going to go out and get a Ferrari. Yeah, you can if you buy it. You can. If you want to go buy it for the evening, again, we're back to the money discussion. You can buy yeah. it. You can. Good you can for you. buy it. It is. Especially in Lurch, in Lurch's case, I'm almost ready to buy for Lurch. I, I almost am. I'm ready almost at the point of I think I have to buy. Or rent. It's rent. 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 They're not going to. Can't it's buy not it on me. Own. It's not on me if somebody falls in love with a hooker. It's not on me. Mm. Ah, I could save her. Okay, do that on your own time, bro. <laughs> She's a hooker. Uh, <laughs> oh, man. I can't tell right, you how so many got, times I've seen so that. So we got 67% smokers. Uh, go to right, the scale so if I'm Lurch, wait, hold on. Mold. If I'm Lurch, go into Vegas. If you're a six, you go for four, and you find the smokers, and 10, 10 years above and beyond your age bracket. Right, right. so next? if I were Lurch... I would go to Vegas looking for a 40-year-old smoker who's probably overweight and kind of a mess. Who's probably, who's probably a skin. two, who's probably a two that has never had a man pay any attention to her whatsoever. Um, hopefully a little withdrawn with two hot friends. And I would make her the center of my attention. And I guarantee I'm getting laid that night. Guarantee. Yeah. Oh, that would be kind of fucking cool to do that. By the uh, way, it's actually not that hard. No, I'm just saying that would be that. I want to see you do that. I want to film okay. that. Like, so we're saying you, you can, you can pull in the seven and eights mm-hmm. pretty consistently. I can I get a 10. You, I can get a used Ferrari. I can pull it. I want to see you. I'm not going to keep it group with a couple of seven and eights and maybe a three, a, a two or three. And I want to see you fucking zone in on that two and three and make her fucking make her Super Bowl weekend. So I okay. challenge Is that a bet? you. I challenge you. Okay. How many twos can and threes can I made? knock down in a weekend? Can you fucking close it? Yeah, I've actually got a brand new angle that I've discovered here in Vegas. Do you want me to give you a new mousetrap? I've got a new mousetrap. I, I, I want it to be statistically proven. All right, I got to call my fucking, shot because this is a free podcast and a video. Okay, okay, okay. Mister. I've got a new mousetrap gimmick okay. that I have not used yet. All right. I'm going to tell you what the new I mousetrap is. I want to be a witness. I want to okay. be a witness to this whole fucking little, well, what are we going to call it? An experiment? A social experiment? How to get laid in Vegas. How to It'll get break laid the in Vegas internet. on Super Bowl Sunday. It will break the internet. Again, we're back to the premise of the show, right? Premise of the show is really simple. How do we get you famous? Okay. That's true. That's the premise. We're doing exactly what the premise of the show is. Okay. I'm going to premiere a new technique for picking up women. Can't wait. It's called the paint angle. What? The paint? The paint angle. And I'm going to prove it. I'm going to prove it with you and watch you get a phone number with the paint angle while sitting on the boulevard. Cake. It'll be cake. So what, are we going to have an artist fucking one of them easels? No, no, no. no. You don't even have to go that far. You just have to have a pad and a piece of paper in front of you and smear some color on the page. Gentlemen, listen to me carefully. You don't even have to paint to make this work. Okay. I will I'm explain curious. it because I've already figured so, this out. I know it'll work. My numbers, not like, you know, remember the old days and I'm going to date myself again. Remember, have you ever watched that show on channel two PBS where they fucking draw shit and you, and you draw along yeah, with Bob, them? Bob, uh, Bob, what's his Bob, name? <laughs> Bobby, yeah. Bobby Coloring. Yeah. All right. I'm going to explain this. Okay. So for those of you keeping trap, mousetrap will cost you about five bucks. 
to buy yeah. a mousetrap to do mousetrap. Okay. Mousetrap. This one is even cheaper. Just a notebook. Not even a notebook. All right, don't don't kill yourself. Piece of paper on a clipboard. I want you to go to your local FedEx office location. I want yeah. you to grab a handful of eight and a half by 11 paper and walk out the front door. So far, we're at zero cost. Zero invested. Number two, I want you to go to your local CVS, Walgreens, Rite Aid, whatever, Kmart, uh-huh. if you're a hillbilly, or a Walmart. I want you to go to the painting section, which is right around the place that has all the kids' supplies for school. I want you to buy a kid's, this is important, buy a kid's watercolor set. Nice. It will cost you less than $3. Wow. I'm On the right way now, out. Shit. Then I want you to pick the most populated area you can find that has great foot traffic, mm-hmm. right? A beach, um, a sitting area at a beach, uh, in our case, Las Vegas Boulevard, right in front of one of the hotels. Yeah. Get yourself a coffee. That's just for you. You need to stay hydrated. Coffee. And I want you to get a little cup of water, and I want you to just smear fucking colors on the page, especially when women are walking by. Yeah. You're looking at me all right now going, that's fucking crazy. This will never work. Listen yeah. carefully to what I'm about to tell you to close the deal. Okay. Smear colors as they come by. They will look and they will see what you're doing and you will get one. Uh, I'm going to give you ratios because I've been running numbers. One out of every 50 women that pass you plus or minus yeah. will ask we'll you what you're painting. And I'm going to tell you the line. Okay. Here's the line. No, Everybody do knows no, I'm no, famous for the line. Don't reveal. Don't reveal. Save the line. They have to watch the next podcast. It's, We're not giving it up. Oh. Save the line. Oh. Text it to me. Oh, so good. Don't fucking say it. Wait, I'm going to text it to you right now just for yeah, the caption of watching you like lose is. your mind when you hear it. Okay. All right. This, will this make me have to take a shit? Because I mean, I'm fucking yes. close, buddy. That's why it's going to be a great closer. Shit up because I gotta fucking take a dude. And I'm going to put it. Here's my camera. Here's my phone. Right. I'm going to text this to you right now. Let's see if and this is a can, closer else, that makes you crazy. Everyone. They're else going. Can wait. Hold on. Let me make this clear. They're going to ask you. Give it. What are you painting? What are we painting? And this. That's is what the they're going to say. That's what okay, she's going to say. Attention. You got my full attention. I'm waiting. She's going to say, what are you painting? Here's the response. Let me see. Drum roll. Waiting. Drum roll. Hold on. Hurry, I got a fucking shit here. All right, here we go. Let's see if it lives up to the hype. Oh, okay. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, got to get out of that and into that. (laughs) (laughs) I love it. Douche, Jerry. Douche, Douche. Jerry. (laughs) Tell me it doesn't. Tell me that won't work. Tell me. Oh, my God. Tell me it won't work. And you don't even need painting skill. Oh. Oh. (laughs) It doesn't matter. Oh. That's, I'll give you just a little tease. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. (laughs) It doesn't matter. And then bada bing, bada boom, da, da, da. Can I get your number? Yeah, then the follow-up line is, can I get your number? Can I get your number? Let me buy you a drink. At least the number. I'll give you the follow-ups to it. The follow-ups are easy. Can I get your number? I'd like to take you out for a drink. I like to paint a person's soul. And it's really important for me to get to know them before I... Yes. Oh, you're a douche. 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 Super douche. Super douche. It's going to be Vegas, Super Bowl, Super Douches coming to town. Coming to a theater near you. Oh, part two of this. Part one of how to pick up a woman with a paintbrush is... Mm. You guys don't know how strong this is. Tell me, right, so, tell me it wouldn't so, work. Just tell me that this wouldn't work. Uh, I'm already convinced. Uh, you're smarter than I really fucking think you are. Thank you. you and are. I only know this because I was jacking around painting 
and I watched this actually play out while I was really painting. And I, uh, you know what? I'm gonna get the fucking the counter as they're walking by, like click, like nope, click, nope, click. I'm gonna see how many. I'm gonna fucking keep track. I'm gonna get that little fucking, you know, coaching fucking clicker, like when they do laps or a NASCAR fucking going around the track. Click, okay, another click, another nope, a click. So I think I'm gonna I'm gonna do my thing. You do your thing, and and then we'll compare notes. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. I like it. It's true. That'll do it. Click on the like, share, subscribe button. Uh, follow us. Get the videos. Go to justfrankandkillian.com. Also, check out our Facebook page at Just Frank and Killian, where you can see a video clip of today's show. You podcast people or you video people. I don't know how much of this I'm actually going to use. Maybe the whole video today. It was like awesome. it. It was a pretty. I would say it was a seven point five. Probably. You got strong stuff at the end. You got you got Mousetrap Part 2 on Vegas Boulevard, and you're getting the paint technique and how hey. any guy can get laid. Really, the biggest tip I can give super, on getting super, laid, super stop trying to bang help, Ferrari. Well, help, help us. Help, help you. us. Help you. Stop Please. trying to drive a Ferrari. Stop it. We're going to be super douche. We're coming, and we're gonna, coming to the rescue. Yeah. Coming to the rescue. Who the fuck is calling me? There you go. We'll see call. you guys next week. Say bye. Goodbye. Thank you. Uh, Super Bowl preview on Just Frank and Killian coming next to a theater near you, to a broadcast near you. Thank you. Have a good weekend. Happy Friday, everyone. <laughs>